Welcome to podcast number four for Rock 30, Bill and Jay's excellent podcast. I'm Billy Quentin. And I'm Jay Odom. And we are very excited to have uh, our special guest as far as we had Justin Holland last week. So, of course, we need to have Katrina Pearson join us this week. Yes, very we do. excited as she's going to answer some pointed questions. And, uh, Jay, I'm going to hand it over to you and kind of give right. everybody a quick background. Uh, she's got a big background, so I'm going to try to paraphrase it. You've got a lot Good luck of with that. Okay. <laughs> it's going to be a little long, but it's worth it. So, Katrina is a dynamic consultant leader who has inspired grassroots activists throughout the nation for over a decade. She burst on the national stage on April 15, 2009, when her inspiring speech at the Dallas Tea Party rally went viral. Her passion and ability to advocate for conservative principles in a compelling way led to frequent appearances on the Fox News Channel, CNN, MSNBC, <clears throat> Newsmax, and across all global news networks. After years of working hard to advance conservative causes, Katrina stopped stepped up to serve as national spokesperson for President Trump's 2016 campaign, earning a reputation for vigorously promoting <laughs> his conservative policies on issues such as border security, illegal immigration, gun rights, religious liberty, and election integrity. In 2020, Katrina had the opportunity to engage in a project dear to her heart when she was tapped by President Trump to lead the National Coalition Program for his reelection campaign. Her efforts resulted in a record-breaking level of support for Trump within minority communities. Her unique background and life experience equipped her to reach new communities and help grow the Republican Party. All right. Time's that up. Was all so thanks for joining that us, That was Katrina. memorized. Okay. <laughs> okay. Thank you. That was outstanding. That's, what a resume. It, it, and there was more. I stopped because yeah. I was yeah. feeling dumb. So. <laughs> there, there's a lot. I, I have mm. had a truly phenomenal journey. You know, it, it has been... Something that I could never have anticipated, but clearly something I was born to do, and I've just enjoyed every minute of it. Okay, I, let's talk about this journey. We'll jump right into... First. Oh, yeah, we got a special... Yeah. We heard a what little something about you. Uh-oh. Uh, I'm pretty sure you've heard a lot about me. <laughs> uh, Mr. Trump told me in his restaurant there's a drink called a Lady Pearson. This is the Texas oh, version yes. of the Lady... This is oh, the Star... Oh, my gosh. <laughs> so, uh, <gasps> we're all going to try this... This favorite drink. It's fat-free. Yes. All right, good. Because, you know, I care wow. much about my Which, Yeah. Me and Billy are always drinking fat-free, so mm. this is... Oh, I love this. Yeah. Oh, love man, it. that's good. Now, what is... <laughs> what is the, the Lady ingredients? Pearson? <laughs> yeah, what's the Lady Pearson? So, at the Trump Hotel, um, Danielle, who's no longer there, um, there was a specific coffee that I like, which is a non-fat white chocolate latte, which is not on the menu. Mm-hmm. But they they labeled it for me, and whenever time I came, the pastry chef would go down, get the white chocolate, and they'd make it for me. Wow! So so it's white chocolate, which coincidentally was my nickname in college. It's wonderful, <laughs> and it's good. This is great. Is that because of your rhythm? Yeah, yeah, okay. uh, sure. <laughs> Thanks, guys. Uh, yeah, you bet. You it's bet. A, it's a little cold, but it's all, yeah, yeah. It's all right. It was bought yesterday, it's but it's, it's, good. it's good. No, I like it. This is really good. It is. It's yeah. really good. That is my go-to every morning. Yeah. yeah. Oh, really? Yes. I, it might be mine now, and it's non-fat. Mm -hmm. Non-fat. Okay. All right. I'm gonna I'm gonna try it out. I like it. I mean, I'm gonna continue it. Okay. So we were talking. Now that we have the lady Pearson, and yes. and we're all invigorated, uh, <laughs> let's now go into. I want to start from the beginning. You know, you you go to Rock, uh, Forney High School. Yes. You gra what year did you graduate, if you want to let everybody know? 1994. Okay. All right. Mm -hmm. You're still way younger than me. And so, uh, and then you went to uh, Kilgore College, mm -hmm. got your associates, yep. then UTD. That's right. All right. So, you get a degree, a bachelor's in biology. Yes. How do you go from a bachelor's in biology to running the Trump campaign in 2016. <laughs> that doesn't seem like a natural path. I think that's completely... You think it's normal? Uh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and like a bachelor's in biology. So you're looking at tadpoles and stuff? What are you doing there the, with the biology degree? You know, it's, like I said, it's been an interesting journey. Um, you know, but but it is interesting that my, my track was healthcare. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, I worked in healthcare for 14 <clears> years. <throat> my plan was to go to medical school after working in healthcare very long. You know, I was in the thick of it as the, the hospitalist programs came in and you started to see how healthcare was changing. And um, a lot of the physicians that I worked with said, you know, go get a go get a master's, you know, don't do this. And, you know, over time, I just went into administration. OK, OK. And so that kind of led and when you get into that field that starts, you know, getting you more in, onto that path. Yeah, uh, we've, uh, we've got a shot here of, of mm -hmm. Katrina. I believe is that what, would that be your senior that year? That is high school. We've Look got volleyball, drill team, 
Spanish club, oh, president of the Spanish club. Yes. So you were political from way on back. I guess I was. Uh, pals. That's B- peer assistance and leadership. We got BPA, which is. I don't remember what that is. <laughs> business, business professionals. Business professionals, business professionals of America, yeah. of yeah. America yeah. Association. Yeah. 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 Your yeah. book. Yep. Interest in journalism. D-F-Y-A. Do um, defy that's defy it. Defy it. That was yeah. the anti-drug deal. anti-drugs. Yeah. Yes. And I love this one. Lieutenant in the High Steppers. Yes, can I was so, on the dance we, team. Can we see a maybe a kick or two? Uh, <laughs> oh, you don't want to see okay, that right This now. is a serious question. Since you're a lieutenant, if Forney was ever attacked, you were a high-ranking official that that's you right. would organize the uh, Forney Army and, 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 and fight yeah. back. Yeah. Okay. You know, my friends in high school and my, my college roommate, you know, they would tell me now, I'm like, I've always knew this. This is this what you're going to do. I knew you were going to be. I mean, I've been a leader my whole life, Beautiful. essentially. Wait, were so. you a mean lieutenant? Did you keep him in No, no, no. Mean you lieutenant. know, my leadership is, you know, I believe leaders create leaders. Mm-hmm. And that's always been my leadership style, so. Mm-hmm. All right, that's outstanding. Uh, and now, and, and one more thing, and Jay, you're, Jay's going to jump in with a lot of the more political stuff. I'm fascinated by your journey, and so well, we should start at the very I, beginning, then. Okay, so I'm going. To. He's making him sound like the deep person. I am. And I'm, I'm just the one a, that cares about people, no. Jay. Okay, I'm not numbers. No, you're the one scared to get into the topics. I am. I'm a little that's, bit scared. <laughs> But what? you know what? After drinking this, I'm good. You Let's may go. be ready. Apparently, there's Let's something else in it. this other than white chocolate. No. <laughs> but uh, She's so, like, what did you put in there? <laughs> we have something kinda in common. Mm-hmm. You were your mom uh, had you when she was 15. Yes. Okay, and she was going to put you up for adoption. Mm-hmm. Decided against it, mm-hmm. and you ended up. She raised you, as it was a single mom. Yes. Okay, I was put up for adoption. Oh. Yeah. And so let me just tell you, you avoided the awkward orphanage thing because the porridge is yeah. horrible yeah. in the orphanages. Yeah. And we had to sing the Annie song every morning. It was terrible. So you avoided a lot of, you know, weird yeah. things. No, but actually, <laughs> I actually, I was adopted and everything's great. How but, old was your mom? Uh, my mom, the uh, she was, um, your birth mom? And, yeah, she was like uh, the biological mom. She was like in her 20s, but had an affair. I see. And so back in the day, uh, this is in 67, you... You put them up for adoption yeah, and yeah. hope somebody else takes care <laughs> of it. Have you met her since? Do you, uh, I've written her. We've written. Back okay. I met my biological father years ago, okay. and that was weird. And so, uh, but then my parents, you know, my adoptive parents have been the best ever. And so oh, they awesome. adopted me, you know, and so everything's been great. And yeah. so, but what I wanted to get to was, um, although I want to talk more about me. No, uh, <laughs> let's talk about that. A challenge. You have mm-hmm. a single mom, 15 years old. Yeah. Um, and you weren't exactly living high on the hog. No. Uh, and so kind of explain your early childhood and what you had to deal with. Yeah, you know, it's, it is interesting. Um, you know, she's, she was the only daughter and firstborn of my grandfather. My, my grandparents owned a little grocery store next to the Cotton Gin in Forney, Texas. Oh, the Cotton Gin. I forgot about the Cotton yeah, Gin. Yeah, we lived right next door to that. Really? Yeah. Okay. Mm-hmm. okay. Did you ever go in there? Oh, yeah, all the time. Yeah, really? Um, yeah, when I was a kid. And so that's where... My mom was pregnant. She was pregnant by a black man. And my grandfather looked her in the eye. And this is the story my mom told me. Um, She's still living, if you want to verify. Okay. Some people are like, that didn't happen. You're like, okay. We're going to fact check. I'm Um, texting her as we speak. Yeah, fact check that. (laughs) So, you know, he told her that abortion was not an option. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And, you know, that's why I'm here today. Same here. That's why I'm unapologetically pro-life. That's why Mm -hmm. I sit on the board of Human Coalition where we just celebrated this last June, saving 65,000 babies. Unbelievable. Um, that's, that's just a personal passion of mine. And, you know, Texas at the time, this is, you know, mid-70s, mm-hmm. did not have a method to adopt biracial babies. <laughs> In the 70s. In 70s. Yeah. Not that long ago. No. So I was living. Yeah, it, yeah, it just was not that long ago. <laughs> People don't realize that. And, you know, so my grandmother, my mother's, mother's mother Mm -hmm. um lived in kansas and so my grandfather they you know ship you away to give birth and so my my mother was sent to live with her while she gave birth to me and i was born in wichita oh okay so um but the interesting thing and this is the first my first experience with divine intervention in my life other than my grandfather saying no abortion yes and you know the nurses made a mistake So when you give a child up for adoption, you're not supposed to take the baby into the room to bond with the mother, but they didn't realize that. So they took me in the room for a feeding and then quickly realized 
that, oh, no, this one's being given up for adoption. We need to go retrieve the child. And at the same time, my grandparents were going into the hospital to see her. But guess who else they saw? Mm, mm. Needless to say, six weeks later, I'm all back <laughs> home in Forney with my family. That's great. So my, my shtick is I'm a native Texan just born in Kansas. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah. But a I'm temporary. With, yeah. I'm <laughs> with you 100% that when people ask about the abortion deal, I'm so pro-life it's unbelievable because of the same situation yeah. if it was legal i'm not here uh yeah. and my biological mm-hmm. mother had to do the same thing once she started showing she had to leave mm-hmm. go and they she had kids already so told them that she was, was feeling no was sick then gave uh had birth came back and then here we go but do you, do you yeah. think that's a common thread with those that have been adopted yeah i think back in that era it, it is now adoption so much different well i'm yeah. saying yeah. the 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 stance on pro-life uh, when, when you were adopted, is that do you think that's a something that kind of sticks with those? With oh those, yeah, you know what I'm saying yeah. because it's like yeah, I mean it's your life. It's your life. You wouldn't even yeah. be here, and right. that's and to see people think of of unborn children as just something you go do and and then go shopping mm-hmm. uh, is horrible. And it's and 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 that you have the and this is the hypocrite uh, hypocritical thing. And all of us have, all of us are hypocrites, but it's the. <clears throat> You know, as far as the liberal side of things, where it is, we got to save these whales, we got to save this, we can't <laughs> right. do this, but we can or kill trees. all the babies, or the trees, trees. Yeah. yeah, but we can kill the babies because it's inconvenient, right? Uh, b- based on a decision you made, more than likely, you know, yeah. that the the father and the then the mother made. So that's where it's really hard for me. But yeah, and, and when I talk to others that are very pro uh, abortion or pro choice, <clears throat> that's my. I don't, I don't know how you can. You know, go against somebody that says, "Listen, I would have been dead. You would, you would not have been here um, right. if if it was legal and 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 it's life. And and how many great people have there been because they weren't aborted? Uh, you know, and ended up becoming huge people in our world over the span of history. So mm-hmm. not to keep going on that. But, but here's yeah. the thing: on you know, this is one of those <clears throat> those topics. Can you change anyone's mind? Will anyone change yes. your mind? And can you change? Well, I've one changed person? minds. So you, um, you've seen, I, yeah, okay. I, I have, and That's it's, it's why I tell my story. You know, I okay. speak to a lot of youth groups given the nature of my journey, <clears throat> um, and I actually don't give a lot of details, as many details as I used to, because when it's your story, it's just what you've experienced. Mm-hmm. But other people relate to you very differently mm-hmm. if they've never experienced it or or they're going through it. And the first time that I spoke to a group of young girls many years ago. I told my story and the moms were there and they were all in tears by the time I got to the end of it. But I received an email (coughs) from a 17 year old girl and she said to me, you know, I'm pregnant. I wasn't going to tell my parents and I was going to get an abortion. But after I was at your event and I heard you speak and she said, and I decided to keep my baby and I'm telling my parents this weekend and I just wanted to thank you. So, yes, you (coughs) can change minds. hundred percent. I mean, we've all. I've changed my mind on things. And that's why I think it's unfair when we go back to old tweets, which we're going to do with Oh, yeah, you, yeah, yeah. Because people have said things and done things that you regret yes. or at the time you thought was right. And then you look back Gosh. and it's not. When you think we're about, allowed to change our minds. We're allowed <laughs> to get we better. Do. When you think about, if I think about <clears throat> even who I was at 30 mm-hmm. or yeah. 25, I don't recognize that guy. No. But that's uh, in a, a lot good of thing. Ways. Yeah, yeah, yeah. In a positive way. Yeah. Um, but of course, when I go back, I had hair and I was thinner, so there I was a lot of good. There was like a lot go of back. good things about twenty five. <laughs> right? Yeah. yeah, there was some good things. Wisdom came. But later. aren't you glad we didn't have social media back oh then? Uh, Could you imagine? Uh, no, no, I couldn't. I couldn't imagine <laughs> the things we've all done. I know you have uh, a background uh, where you know the the you know where I was a shoplifting or something yeah, like that, like nineteen or twenty. Nineteen yeah. and twenty. Are we all going to be you know based on what decision we made at nineteen well, or twenty? No. Yeah, I'm glad. I, I, the things that I was doing at that age, let's just say I'm glad that it's not being made public. Right. Like you have to go through. social media. <laughs> yeah, I don't hide it. I don't run from it because, it, like I said, you know, my story changes people's lives. And that's my mission here. Mm-hmm. And I've learned that over the time period. Because, you know, when you're going through it, you don't really understand why you're being yes. put through certain tribulations. <clears throat> and you look back and then you see it and it all makes sense. And so, you know, I tell people all the time, you have to own your life. Like, if you are a believer, then you know that every life has a purpose. And you understand that that journey is 
that person's journey alone. Mm -hmm. And you should respect that, whether you Mm -hmm. agree with it or not. That person is here on their own journey, learning their own things, going through their own issues. And I respect that in all people. And that's where I come back to with even people polar opposite in beliefs. Mm -hmm. There's a reason that they have those beliefs. That's right. That's what they've experienced. That's right. The community they were in, whatever it was. I was blessed to be raised Christian and, and grow up in a conservative area. Yeah. I didn't grow up in San Francisco and, and all that stuff. Now, would I have been different? Yeah, I would have been different yeah. probably then. So, yeah, I and that's the thing we as we now get kind of let's go into the politics part of this. <clears throat> And this is where Jay will take over, and I'll go give me another mocha. How did this happen? Uh, oh, you get but, the politics? Uh, okay. I'm, He's I'm, way more politics than I am. I'm more. I am. I am. I like the human connection. No, you don't. You said you hate humans. You said yeah. that before we start. No, I'm kidding. Uh, <laughs> no, but you're right. But Jay is a lot more. I'm very. Uh, well, this is something that's been very eye opening since we became, and and we did not start this to try to be. Tucker Carlson. No. We wanted to have fun. We had football players. I think we saw how heated this this race has mm-hmm. become. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So me being an opportunistic oppor- opportunist. Opportunist. I went to Texas State. I know how to I say it. I didn't I, I went to three universities including SMU but have no degree. So. <laughs> okay. <laughs> UTD you know, and Texas State will take care of you. Don't worry uh, about right. it. But we I got, saw we got you. We got it was. It, <clears throat> I haven't seen anything like that in this community in so long. So one of the things. Uh, like with, with our recent our recent post with your with your opponent speaking, mm-hmm. um, the first thing I found out is most people didn't listen or want to listen. Mm-hmm. Some did, some did. They want to get on there and nonstop bitch. Mm-hmm. Yeah, mm-hmm. it was three hundred and eighty comments that mm-hmm. I had to just disgustingly turn off, mm-hmm. and they're making up stuff mm-hmm. and slander, mm-hmm. and I'm like. It's not the politician. It's all of us people, in a sense. Do you know mm-hmm, what I'm saying mm-hmm, by that? Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. It, we we have turned, so, and, and, and then I had to remind myself, this is Republican to Republican. Mm-hmm. This is Texan to Texan. This is mostly rock wall to rock wall, mm-hmm. and we're treating each other unbelievably horribly. Mm-hmm. So I'm just, I'm just like, <clears throat> this is not what I wanted to do. I, I didn't account for the hate. And, and you oh, live welcome this. to my world. You right. live this. <laughs> this is right. my and world. Yeah. You live it. Yeah. And but you you're able. You're thick skin. Mm-hmm. Well, you have to be. I worked for Trump. I couldn't. <laughs> <laughs> this is nothing for you. And that works. The working for but, Trump, I would think, from all the haters. Yeah. But also, Trump himself's pretty rough on people too, isn't he? He'll get. He'll get. Yeah, on of course. But you know what? The thing is, he doesn't hit back. Mm-hmm. You know, he, he doesn't hit. who he is. He hits back. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's right. And yeah. so yeah, that's, that's right. the thing. You know, I haven't said anything negative about anyone. Mm-hmm. I have no intentions on saying anything negative about anyone because I'm running for a reason. And, you know, I, I just found it interesting that, you know, some of the <clears> stuff <throat> that you're referring to, the attacks on me are not about my intelligence. They're not about my mm-hmm. policies. They're all very personal mm-hmm. and mostly lies and defamatory and it's slanderous you know there are people just saying all kinds of crazy things and but that's that's actually what happens to women in politics i was going to you know? ask you do you feel like they would say the things they've said to absolutely you absolutely not absolutely not hmm. i i have to i have to find myself thinking that absolutely not you know i told you know my campaign team before i decided to get in this race i said you guys you got to be ready for something to happen and i said eventually they're going to attack my sexuality. That's just what happens. Mm-hmm. And it's happened in every campaign I've ever worked on. Um, they, they come after you. If they can't attack a woman's policies, her experience, her intelligence, they go after one of two things, her looks and her sexuality. Mm-hmm. And that's how mm-hmm. they try to demean you. Mm-hmm. And so this is par for the course. You know, you already know that. Absolutely. Yeah. I told them coming in. You, you mentioned your, your faith earlier. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And that's another thing that's been under attack. I've Which is strange. Things. Yeah. The, uh, play, we've got it. Like, this is a text that's being used against you. Um, or a tweet. A tweet. Yes. This was a tweet made uh, maybe 13, 14 years ago. That was March of 2012. So that was 14 years. Am I right? No, uh, no, no, no. Wow. Yeah, 10 years would be 22. Oh, yeah. 2012 sounds like yesterday, but that Don't was 14 years ago. Don't do math on ago. the air, Jay. What are you doing? <laughs> Well, to try to be somewhat accurate. Yeah. It was a long time ago. Twelve if that's years 2012, ago, Jay. That's 12 probably, years ago. So if that's 2012, that's most likely Newt Gingrich's campaign. Okay, um, I have to say I believe I, I'm with you on this one in a lot of ways. Notice it's always the Christians that are married or too old to party that tell you how you should be living your life as if they were saints. Yeah. There's a lot of 
Oh, it's saints. I thought that was streets. I didn't understand <laughs> that. There is a lot of uh, hypocrisy <laughs> yeah. in the church, and I'm, uh, I don't well, want to. I don't want to diss the church, but it, it is that. Tell me, tell us what you meant by yeah, that. Yeah. So the context in the 2012 tweets, because again, these are specific years, specific campaigns. There was this huge fight, and I don't know how long you've been paying attention to national politics, but specifically here in Texas, there was this big split of Republicans, <clears throat> Christian conservatives, between Newt Gingrich and Rick Santorum. Yes, I remember that. They were all trying to out-Christian each other. Right, right. So, <laughs> you know, because Newt Gingrich had his... <clears throat> affairs and his, things, yeah. you know, human condition yes, issues, yes. and Rick Santorum was the saint, mm -hmm, you know. Mm -hmm. And so what they're doing is they're, they're pulling these back and forth, you know, con tweets out of context, trying to say, this is what, you know, she's saying about us. And, you know, it's... I think it's ridiculous um, because the one that they're using in an ad, which is actually not the full tweet, it's cut off. It Let's was totally a joke. Put that this on there. Is, we this talked is about that. Interesting yeah. to see here. This one, when I first <clears throat> saw this, this is one of those things where you're like, "Wow, yeah, yeah, wow." Yeah. There are yeah. no such things as Christians. Yeah, that and that's what was really. You <laughs> yeah. said, "Did you get the whole thing?" And I said, "There's the whole thing right there." No, that's not the whole. Well, thing. And look, you can even see in that screenshot where it's cropped. You see that, the yeah. beginning of the next word? Okay. Yeah. You see okay. that? Yeah. So are we looking at an image that's been used against you? This yes, image? Yes, that image is being okay. used against me. And then she, 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 you just provided us with your entire text. The actual. And let's yeah. see that. Oh, it's oh, not there yet. Wow. Oh, that was, my, all that was my, it's on my text. I was okay. supposed to send it to you. Okay. It, but I'll, anyways, when we it, edit, I say ha. Huh. There's two sentences there, not just one. And it's in a back and forth from some blog. I couldn't re remember what it was if you, you know, for my life. So we'll put this in. Yeah, it says okay. uh, there are no such things as Christian. Just people who call themselves Christians. Ha. Huh. Ha. Huh. Yeah. yeah. Like, yeah. okay. Like which, tongue in cheek. Which most people would agree with, I would think. That, you know, there are a lot of fake or Christian in name only. Well, and so the reason why that particular, that specific attack is just strange to me is because my father's an ordained deacon. <laughs> <clears throat> what wow. Church? What type of church? And I'm not going to tell you which church because I don't want no, him. No, like Baptist? He, I grew up Baptist, um, but he's a deacon um, at my uncle's church in Dallas. Okay. okay. They're Pentecostal. Okay. And, you know, so I grew up Baptist. And so, you know, I was baptized in my 20s. Mm -hmm. And so to to call to say I'm not a Christian, I mean, I speak at churches because of my story. Mm -hmm. um, I just how can you as a Christian question someone else's faith? Right. right. Like that's a very non-Christian thing to do. <laughs> right. 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 <laughs> Maybe right. I read a different Bible. I don't know. <laughs> um, well, I heard it was the Quran. <laughs> oh. <laughs> is, that, is that right? Or is that a, no? I, wow. wow. Well, we can actually talk so about that because I've actually been a target by ISIS terrorists because of my Christian values. I, now, I read somewhere that you had a hit out on you. Is that right? Yeah. So what happened is um, back when I lived in Garland, right across the lake, there was a group that came to um, to our city, basically, on school, my, my son's high school property. And it was this whole Islamophobia thing. You know, you, ha you know, you have to accept Sharia law. You can't say this. You can't do that. And we were like, uh, no, because Sharia law is the antithesis <clears throat> to the Constitution. And mm -hmm. people don't understand that Islam comes with its own political system, mm -hmm. which is Sharia law. Mm -hmm. So we can't allow that to encroach anywhere near our government entities. So we fought back. We started making phone calls. And we called, uh, you know, Pamela Geller and we said, hey, you know, we need you to come to my city. And at the time, I had served on boards and commissions. So I have local government experience. I've served on transportation boards, economic development boards, healthcare facility boards. And I went to my city council and I said, you guys let them have this event, this anti-American event on our school property. Now you have to let us have one. And they said, OK, because they had to. Mm -hmm. And so she came in and did this event called Draw the Prophet. And that became. Oh, yeah. Do you remember that now? Yes. Yeah. Yes, yes. So these two ISIS terrorists drove across the several states mm -hmm. to come to that event to kill us all mm -hmm. because mm -hmm. we were not going to bow down um, to this this radicalized process. And where was this event at? This was the Garland Event Center. Garland, Center. yes, yeah. at the Colwell yeah. Center. That's right. Yes. 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 I totally. Now, and so did y'all have any warning like we've heard this is going to happen? No, but I will tell you, a um, friend of mine, when we got out of the car, we arrived. There were no protesters. It was very quiet. 
Now, when they came, we had a ton of protesters. The entire Garland Tea Party, the Dallas Tea Party, everybody was there protesting. So we knew something wasn't right the moment we stepped into the parking lot because there were no protesters at all. Yeah. But we went forward anyway. And then sure enough, we're in the event. We get into the thick of it and then SWAT just comes in and we hear that, you know, there were shooting outside and they shot them dead in the parking lot. Thank God Mm -hmm. for law enforcement. But yeah. So, you know, I don't take these things lightly. No, you cannot. You cannot. Uh, One of the things I just thought about the hat, because I took we took so much heat about playing favoritism. Mm -hmm. This was this was I was told I had to wear this by. Your campaign manager to get the interview, so. Oh, is that right? I, uh, no, let's, let's be honest. We were offended by your bald head. They said, Matt's, yeah, they said, you're not going on with the bald head. We don't have any powder to put on. I that's why I wear a hat. Yeah, so. Yeah, that's a weird looking hat, I just got to say. No, what do you mean? I'm keeping this one. You can have it. Okay. Oh, it's All yours. Right. Okay. Oh, look mm-hmm. at that. Uh, Jay's already getting gifts. I'm getting, I'm getting the, the merch. The merch. The merch. Yeah. Um, okay, so. So, you talked about the tea party. Yes. Okay. Yes. So you then, you, you obviously you you you're claimed or you know you started getting on the national scale mm-hmm. with a speech at the uh, with the tea party and all mm-hmm. that, and then you eventually uh, this was in 2009, I believe. Yes. And you talked about Texas should should, should secede from the union. Is that something that was discussed then? I remember when all that was going on. I don't remember, but it's it's more of one of those kind of a sentiment. Yes. Because it, it's. Unrealistic. Exactly. So That's, it's more deal. of a sentiment. Me and my son talk about it all the time. He's always like, "We should just." I go, "Dude, we have. There's no way we could exist." You can't. I think without, you can't. It sounds neat. Yeah, but, but then you, you start exist. thinking about economics and well, everything. Yeah, that ain't gonna yeah. Well, armies, and, and it wouldn't navies, work. It wouldn't stuff. work. Texas huh. would have to to separate into five different sections. Right. right. And everybody that's on, you know, social security, everybody, that, right. the disabled veterans, all of them would We're lose their benefits immediately. Much. So mm-hmm. it's not even plausible. But, but you, it's just a sentiment. Yeah. And then you started the you have the Tea Party in Garland. Yep. And support the Ted Cruz uh, campaign yes. in 2012, right? Yes. Okay. All right. So talk a little bit about that, if okay. you can, about uh, being a part of Ted Cruz's campaign. And is he is he endorse you now on this campaign? I haven't asked okay. for his endorsement. Okay. Um, but in 2009, you know, I was <clears throat> I was in a place where you know a lot of people across the country were. They knew something was wrong. They couldn't quite put their finger on it. These are average people working, taking care of their families, not involved so much as in politics, but they were paying attention. And um, for myself, you know, I just felt like again being in healthcare, seeing universal healthcare coming on the horizon, knowing that it's going to be bad for the country. And all this debt that we're in, and we just had the bank bailouts, right. and that was just, just everything was going wrong. And so I just felt, you know, deeply concerned. But mm-hmm. who am I? You know, I didn't come from a pedigree. I didn't have a, you know, a daddy to hand me down his business. You know, I didn't have any of those things handed to me. I've had to work for everything that I've had. So what does somebody like me do? And I think a lot of people are in that position. They feel like I have nothing. I can't do anything. Why vote? Mm-hmm. Right? Like, right. what can I do? And again, it's why I share my story, because there's one person who didn't have a pedigree, who didn't have a background, who didn't have anything needed that you would see to show up on Fox News one day. Mm -hmm. (laughs) Um, And it was all because I went to one meeting and that one meeting came from 10 days of prayer. And I just kept praying about it. I'm like, I feel like I have to do something, but I don't know what to do. And so I turned off. The TV, the radio, everything for 10 days and just prayed, you know, use me, show me what I can do. And on that 10th day, I was driving to pick up my son from school and I turned the radio on and it was Rush Limbaugh and he was ranting as usual. Right. (laughs) And I'm thinking, what what is he talking about? He's like the tea parties. Have you seen all these tea parties and Rick Santelli? And I'm thinking, what did I miss? So I get home because, you know, you're saying tea party and I'm thinking, you know, sure. tea party. Like, where, <laughs> right. what is this tea Where's party? Tea? Like, right. Wh- right. So I go home and I look it up and I'm like, Rick Santelli, right? And I see the speech on the floor of Wall Street. And I'm like, yes, this is right. This is exactly what's happening. So I did this Google search for local tea parties and I found the Dallas Tea Party. And I immediately joined the Facebook group and I'm reading through everything and I'm like, yes, this is what I'm feeling. This is what I'm thinking. And they had a meeting coming up. And I was like, oh, boy. So I called my best friend and I was like, hey, I'm going to go to this meeting. There's these people doing this stuff. And she's like, I'm not going to that. 
(laughs) (laughs) And I'm like, oh, okay. So I ended up going by myself. And it was the first time that I met Mark Davis. Um, He was there at Knights of Columbus. I walk into this room and there's all these people. You know, nobody looks like me. um, But I just, I had to stay there. You know, I had to. And I listened to what they were talking about. And they said, oh, you know, we had a couple hundred people at this event last time. We need people to help you know, sign up volunteers and all this stuff. I'm like, oh, I can do that. Like, that's something I can do. So I signed up and then they called me afterwards and said, hey, we saw you signed up. Would you like to speak? Wow. And I thought, no. Like, I, you know, <laughs> in my head, I'm thinking, oh my goodness, I don't even know these people, right? But I said, yes. <laughs> and he says, well, what are you going to talk about? And I said, I have no idea. Like, I've never done anything like this before. And he says, well, well, tell me about yourself. And I shared my story with him and how I came from poverty and, you know, did all these things, put myself through school and I worked and I refused the welfare route, you know, took care of my kid and put myself through college, became the first to graduate and finally bought my house with a swimming pool. Mm -hmm. You know, my American dream has been achieved. And um, he goes, well, just tell that story. And I was like, oh, I can do that. And that's what I did. Mm -hmm. But what I didn't know is that, you know, YouTube wasn't a thing back then. (laughs) But I didn't realize that it was put on YouTube and it went viral. And so the next morning I had learned through opening my messages and seeing thousands of messages from TV reporters and radio and newspapers that Fred Thompson had gone on his radio show that morning and said, that girl down in Dallas She gave the best speech out of all 2,000 speeches. She's the tea party darling. And I was like, what? Instantly labeled. Boom. (laughs) Instantly labeled. And then the whole country wanted to know, who is this woman? Uh And that's how it began. Wow. Wow. That's really cool. It can happen that fast. That fast, overnight. In in this day and age with the spreading. That's right. Uh, So I wanted to go through some of the critiques that I have been reading on Mostly our 380. <laughs> yeah. yeah. I'm proud to have the comments. Let's, Do they even know let's there was a podcast? entertain the trolls. They, we were not. It had nothing to do with us. <laughs> no, so it was not about. Just it was cre- just yelling out our, you know, sides. Although someone said we played favorites. Uh-huh, of course. Favorites? Uh, although we hadn't even had you yet, but we were playing favorites right. with the first. Right. Oh, right. right. Okay. That's why I need to clarify the head. Yeah, yeah. Uh, it was brought here for me as a gift. To take home. So. Okay. <laughs> this is the second time you've uh, defended it. Though. Okay. Yeah. Well, I just did. I'm starting to wonder now. Yeah. I'm no, a- I'm just. You know, I took some heat. I'm not. I'm not a thick skid like you. you no, know? oh, please. <laughs> yeah, you are. Okay. So we. This is the big one. Okay. Which my daughter, who is taking government, had to tell me what a carpet bagger was. Oh. You didn't know a carpet bagger. I remembered it from seventh grade, kind yeah. of. Basically, for those that don't people know, people still use that term. Uh, it's a very old term, well, but it means south, so it's people coming from other areas. The north to, mainly. It, it started with the north, right? right coming right. to take that is the definition during right. Reconstruction. Yes. We're going to take right. advantage, right? Um, and so, it, so here's what others are saying, and okay. I know you already know this, but I want to say it. She um, was brought to this district hmm. to take out Justin Holland uh, by either Paxton, the governor. Somebody big. She uh, <clears throat> has no roots in this area. The only reason she's here is because she was asked to mm. be here. The house that she lives in isn't really hers. It's in mm. a trust. Uh, and that's one of the things, if you're good, I, I, I hear a lot about the trust. Yeah. And I know you need a trust for safety. Yes. But the, con- but the concern that a lot I of people. I own the trust. I was going to say, <laughs> the, the, it's real important whether you are the beneficiary or just the trustee and the home, the um, the, the, uh, the the collateral or, or the the property, who owns that within the trust? It's that's all a, me. Okay. Yeah. That's so you own that home, yes. not someone. Okay. It is mine. That's that, <laughs> and I didn't want to pry, but I feel like that's yeah. in, into your financial situation. But there's so much talk about she don't even have a house. <clears throat> I know that's fake. Right. So okay. okay. But you know that that by itself, I just want to point this out. The fact that I had to go through all that trouble to do that is just evidence that I didn't move here to run because, of course, that's going to be the biggest issue. Okay. okay. Right? So why would I hide where I live if I wanted to run? So did Paxton ever say, I would like for you to run? No. The governor? The only people that approach me to run are the people in the district. Okay. Okay. So yeah. no one higher has ever said, we need you to go down there and take no. care of this. Okay. No. And, okay. And, you know, the thing I kept coming back to was... <clears throat> 
we knew you from the Trump campaign, mm -hmm. all that stuff. And so people would talk like, okay, so weird that she's at this pinnacle. You, you yeah. were with the president of the United States. Mm -hmm. You were his We still got to get there. Yeah, we're going to yeah. go there. You're, <laughs> you're the senior spokesperson. We're supposed to only him. go an hour and a half. How's your time? Um, we have a, an event, but I think we have a little bit more time if we, okay, we need we gotta to go. Get She's there. loving yeah. being here. Just yeah. let us know. Yeah. yeah. And so, so we got to move. Yeah, we got to roll. You're the one so, talking. But, uh, <laughs> and so anyway, she um, goes from that to running for House 33. I know, that's right? just a, you know, how that, that can't be coincidence. That's what a lot of people are saying. So how did you get to this point to decide, I got to run for House 33? Well, the natural <clears> transition <throat> would be for me to run for Congress, right. not House. Right, right, right. right, you, right. you don't go right. backwards, okay. essentially, you did. right? You did, right? Against Several sessions? years ago. Yeah. 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 Okay. And 14. Yeah. Against Sessions. Was it yeah. Sessions? Okay. Yeah. yeah. We had to we had to do something because, you know, most Americans who are living their lives, they don't really know the parliamentary process that happens when legislation is being made. So there's a way there's a method called demon pass where a legislator can or a congressman can say, oh, I didn't vote for it, but it passes anyway because they've deemed it and passed it. Got it. Yeah. And when you're the chairman of the rules committee, you can do those things <clears> like, <throat> well, I didn't vote it, mm -hmm. vote for it, but it still passes. And at that point in time, and you'll remember this when I say it, but the Gang of Eight was about to push for amnesty and John Boehner was going to have it deemed and passed, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. So we had to launch a campaign to stop that. Mm -hmm. And it worked because the bill came down. Okay. So that's the 2014 run. But going back to... Um, what brought you here for House 30? Yeah, so going back to that. So let's go back a little bit further because you'd questioned me about my roots and all that. Yeah, so yeah. I want to make sure that that's clear. Yes, yes. Um, so as you know, I graduated from Forney High School, mm -hmm. which is this big back then. Mm -hmm. Our high school prom was at Chandler's Landing. My <laughs> uncle, <laughs> my uncle and grandfather worked <laughs> at Steve's Mobile. <laughs> a party bar. Yeah, yeah, right, right. Uh, my uncle and grandfather worked at Steve's Mobile on the Rockwall Square. Yeah, yeah. My uncle lived on Yellow Jacket Lane. Right yeah. here in Rockwall. Okay. My son went to middle, middle school, elementary school in Rowlett. I lived in Garland for a little bit of time. Mm -hmm. My son's family has been here forever. Um, this is home okay. for me. So um, Justin might not like it, mm -hmm. but this <laughs> is home for me. So are you on any committees here in Rockwall? Are you here? No. Okay. No. So back to the Trump and leaving. Mm -hmm. So I was with him from 2015 <clears throat> before he even announced. And I was with him all the way to the end on stage with him on January mm -hmm. 6th. After that, um, all my friends and colleagues followed him to Florida. And, you know, I, I was looking at maybe splitting a place with somebody and doing it part time. I, I never once got rid of my property in Texas. I was going back and forth because I'm very close to my nieces and I want to make sure that I'm an integral part of their lives. So um, I said, no, I need to go home. Like, I want to go home. We had been through so much. I mean, you guys watched it all play out on TV. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. But I lived it. Mm -hmm. Right. You were there. I was there. Is is it now a good time to hear your take on what you saw there? Because it's it's fascinating to hear this from someone who was there and not just seeing the cameras. So what I can and, 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 uh, just to quickly. Just yeah. To, what what did I can you see? tell you in summary, I won't go into too many details because I'm still okay. a witness. Okay. I'm a DOJ okay. witness. That's why I don't do a lot of national stuff right now because my credibility with the jury is on the line here. Got it. And I need to protect <clears throat> the president mm -hmm. and his family. Um, but there were a lot of factors that really just converged on January 6th. Most of them didn't even know about the others. So for a lot of us, we were in the state of confusion for like the first year. Like what happened? How did this happen? Who are those people? You know, people we've never even seen or heard of. Mm -hmm. um, and it all played out in the January 6th committee. I know people didn't want to watch the hearings. I encourage people to watch the hearings. I think it will bridge a lot of the gaps in knowledge that that's out there and available. Um, but it was it was quite intense. And your position was, from what I've read, was you were the liaison between the White House and the organizers of, of yes. a portion of that, right? Yes. Once I got brought into it, I realized very quickly there were problems. Mm -hmm. And I took those problems to the chief of staff and he said, take this over. Fun. <laughs> if, if I was you, like, okay. Yeah. So if, if from everything you saw, if one was people just standing around looking mm -hmm. and 10 Pearl Harbor straight out war happening, what, what would you rate what you saw? Maybe? Well, look, at our event at the Ellipse, it was fine. I wasn't at the Capitol. Okay. Okay. 
Um, so I don't know what was going on at the Capitol. I was seeing it happening in real time on social media and people texting me and everything. And I could not believe it. Mm. Like, I just could not believe it. Why like on earth? I remember it yeah. so clearly. Like, I, and in my head, remember, I'm coming from, you know, a decade of experience in grassroots. You know, we've marched on Washington, D.C. a number of times. Right. And, you know, we know that we are targets by this government. We were labeled in 2010 by Nancy Pelosi, by Nancy Pelosi as homeland security risks. Right. right. We're domestic right. terrorists, according right. to the left. Have so you, I got to ask, <clears throat> have you met Nancy Pelosi? I've seen her, but we have not met met. Okay. If yeah. you watched our last podcast, Jay has a crush well, on Nancy Pelosi. Is that right? I, I, I was, think so. There was a, a picture Very of her unstable. and Justin together. Oh. And I just said, that's a wonderful picture of Nancy Pelosi. She <laughs> uh-huh. was smooth. She she was smooth. So you think, like, photoshopped? Maybe maybe she's photoshopped to look bad. Maybe she's, <laughs> I don't know. So that's That happens. Was, so unstable. How did she look in person? A little scary. I mean, she just looks like <laughs> I a, can't let it go. No an kidding. older woman. I mean, she looks like she looks on TV. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. And I, and I'm not asking that just because she's a woman. It's her I think look. You are. No, her look is. It's scary. <laughs> it's freaky. So I, anyway, it's, I got and, a, and she got a, a higher lift than I think probably. That's true. Should, Good point. Yeah, Good point. You know, it's, uh, but the, the, you were a part of the Save America uh, on the January 6th, right? Wasn't that the? Yes, that the, was the ellipse. The ellipse. Mm-hmm. Okay. All right. And so what you saw. You were like us. We're like, okay, this is way over the top. That we did not expect anything like this. No, people are jumping fences and raiding. Yeah, the that was that was totally like, I still to this day can't wrap my brain no. around why anybody would even think that you could do that. Right, <laughs> like, right. What in your mind thinks that you can actually just go do that? Go do that. Um, and then that, and it hurts it. everybody else. Mm-hmm. It hurt. Mm-hmm. It hurt the rest of us. Mm-hmm. It did. You know. Yep. And yeah. but see, this is something that we've known for a long time with Tea Party and grassroots It's like you have to police your group, like you have to make sure the bad actors aren't there. You got to make sure the people that aren't going to cause trouble, which is what I did for the ellipse. You know, we got a lot of those people who could have caused trouble for the president were not involved mm-hmm. okay. because I was involved. Did you ever have the fear you could be prosecuted? Oh, absolutely. I mean, they, they come for all of us. So was that keeping you up at night? The thought of it? I mean, yes, but probably for different reasons. You know, I I think the biggest part for me personally was I had spent nearly my, you know, adult life fighting for the Constitution, fighting for our values and fighting for freedom and being a voice of the people. I've always been a voice for the people. And then to have your government label you Mm -hmm. as an insurrectionist or a seditionist. I mean, that was you just can't prepare. Mm -hmm for that and there's you have text of where you're saying listen we got to get this under control yeah. and, and stuff like that even that was in the trial right or yes it was, it was. Yeah. used yes. against you right not for you but against well you. they <clears throat> couldn't use it against me because i was smart enough to document everything okay, okay. <laughs> so all my text emails are all public knowledge you were thinking ahead like this I, is all i was protecting archives. the president and okay. i was protecting his family <laughs> and i didn't care who i pissed off in the process okay yeah Okay, now let's get, let's get back to the Rockwall area. Yeah. Uh, what elect, have you voted on recent elections here yes. in Rockwall? Okay. And so, because uh, these are some of the questions that, you know, I know people have brought up about your involvement here in Rockwall. Mm-hmm. Uh, to know truly how well you know the Rockwall area, <laughs> what's, the, what's the best burger in the area? And there's only three uh, answers that we'll accept. <laughs> the best burger? I'd say probably the the one that my grandpa and uncle would, would eat is Boots. There it is. Oh! There it is. There it she is. She did it. She nailed okay. it. She nailed it. Uh, also okay. would have accepted Joe Willie's. Uh, no, Joe no. Is Joe Willie's is good for their fries. They are. Ooh. They're really good. Extra. Uh, we always ask extra. extra and the extra onion crispy. rings. Yeah. Uh, and the onion rings are and good. And who doesn't fried love that pickles. whole, you can get all the, the mayonnaise. <laughs> yeah. Fried pickles. Fried yes. pickles are good. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah, we get those. Yeah. Okay. Now I'm hungry. Should we just wrap it up right now? Boot, yeah, Boots is about to close. Uh, Let's Boots go. is already. If you don't order by 10 a.m., you're yeah, done. Yeah, you're, he's, out. He's, you're he's, out. He's good. Uh, Russell's already got it moving. What else Okay, you got? great. Okay, I also want to ask you, let's jump over back to some of the, you know, I'm sitting here, I listed all the things. Like, you don't have, Ted Cruz, you haven't asked him to endorse you. I have not. That's um, been a big question. You yeah. work for Cruz, you work, you work for Trump. I didn't Where's technically your work for Cruz. I volunteered okay. for Cruz. Okay. Where's Trump's yeah. endorsement? I, I haven't asked Trump for his endorsement either. Okay. Okay. See, the thing about endorsements is, let me tell you what's important to me. And I told my team this from the beginning. I don't want a national race. This Mm -hmm. race is about Texas. This race is about Rockwell. I come from all that. 
And when you do that, then I'm going to get bombarded with media because then I'm going to be drawn (laughs) into the Trump stuff, which I'm being drawn in with the RNC stuff right now. And I'm like, guys, I'm running a race here. I need to put the national stuff on hold. So I have a well-documented history of my policies and positions in this state, in the state house Mm -hmm. from years ago. Mm -hmm. I want to run on me. I want to give people a choice this election cycle to choose somebody who is a go along to get along or somebody that is a fighter. One thing, uh, let's go to you now yep. and your your uh, issues and, and, and policies and stuff that you want to, uh, you know, be, uh, have uh, enacted when, if, if, when and if you get elected. Uh, we Let's go to the school choice. Yes. We, Justin was here, and a lot of things are being said that Justin voted against the teacher raise and and uh, the money. Go- he and he clarified it by saying the only thing he was against was the voucher, mm-hmm. but the other things were on that, and he couldn't vote for it because of the voucher. He did submit another bill, from what I understand, without the vouchers that he is all for all the the raises and and uh, uh, the uh, I'm forgetting the other issues there uh, that he was for as far as the, the savings, uh, the, the savings, and the and all that, that stuff. He- ED, uh, uh, educational savings, I don't know. Anyway, but the only thing he was against was the the vouchers. Mm-hmm. You're for the vouchers, am I right? I am for the savings accounts, yes. The savings accounts, yes. yes. Yeah, and that would be a part of the vouchers. Everybody gets a certain amount right. that they can choose what mm-hmm. school they go to. And so for Jay again... Explain what the vouchers are. He's still confused by it. I <laughs> am. I don't. <laughs> can, can you remember? Say it? We're can college you say graduates. It? He's well, not. look. Let me just can point you say out it for that. A, a yeah. Dummy. I, 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 okay. Well, I'll just tell you what it is. But <laughs> Justin's being a little disingenuous on the process because Governor Abbott campaigned on this in his reelection. So you can't be shocked that this was a part of the plan because the school funding, the teacher raises, all the money that was going to the schools was a package deal. So he knew this was the governor's package. I mean, I've been around in Texas forever, and I've never seen Governor Abbott come out personally against someone. And he came out against Justin on Twitter. I saw it. Yeah, we saw that. So (laughs) that should be your first red flag. What is going on with this? So he's being very disingenuous. Um, when he talks and about what is the but, disagreement then on what he is not for him because he feels like if I understood him right that once it gets past the uh, the, the people that low income or the you know those with disabilities or something like that and finally it gets to uh, others that there's not a lot left for people to really make the decision or to use but but let me go back you mentioned uh, getting called out by Abbott mm-hmm. so here it, it uh, many people would say when you went a bit when you went against Paxton and did what you did all hell's broken loose we're going to take you down mm-hmm. whatever we got to do we're going to bring the government in can you you could understand why people might say you yeah. do what you did you're going to pay for it yeah when you, you know? vote against your constituents and you vote against your party and you join democrats you're probably going to get in trouble for that and you don't think he had any right to vote as he did or absolutely to- not okay. no look ronald reagan campaigned on school choice mm-hmm. donald trump campaigned on school choice 20 states have it But Florida, which I think he mentioned how great Florida was with open enrollment and all their school choice. So why don't the students and families in Texas have the same opportunities? Mm -hmm. Right. You know, and I just want to say, if you really want to understand, you know, choice aside, the fundamental philosophical differences between my position on education and Justin Holland's position on education is very clear. Justin Holland believes that the government should be in control of your children's education, and I believe families should be in control. If he of your was sitting education. here, would he would he say you're right? I do. Absolutely, he said it at the forum. Okay, he's not denying. Right, he 100 okay. percent is. You know, when you ask him about school choice, he <clears throat> said, "Well, the teachers don't want it, but what about the parents? Mm-hmm. Well, it, the administrators don't want it, but what about the children?" There's a fundamental philosophical difference okay. between us two. And He's playing, for government, and I'm for families. So playing devil's advocate, mm-hmm. the whole idea of he represents District 33, right. some of the best schools in the state. That's right. I want to take care of my constituents. It may make sense for some areas, not my schools. Right. How do you feel about that? Well, what I would say <clears throat> is 85% of the district said they want it. Yeah. So if you're a mm. – if you are a – Representative. I mean, see, I think what Justin has confused his role, like he calls it his job, but this is a service. 
you're providing a service to these people. You're supposed to represent the people in the district. And in order to do that, you have to know what they want. Now, if you fundamentally disagree with them, which in this case he obviously does, then he should be taking heat for it because 85% of the people in this district said they want it. I have people coming to my meet and greet saying, you know, I don't want my kid in this public school. I mean, we have, think about this, 30 years ago, we were learning reading, writing, arithmetic, mm -hmm. school stuff. Cursive writing. Now, cursive writing. Yeah. now we have schools that are focused on multiculturalism and, you know, mm -hmm. they're not doing cursive anymore. And now you've got teachers trying to transition your children. Guess what? Some parents don't want that for their kids. And, and speaking of, let me switch gears real quick. The I know there was a tweet that's got a lot of talk on uh, Malcolm X. Yeah. Your political hero. Um, and, and of course, I think we all know the as, as conservatives. Popped it up, yeah. As as we all know, as conservatives, there's the great mm -hmm. th that everyone understands. Be leery of the white liberal, yeah, who wants to play savior. I've heard many say that, and that makes a lot of sense. Yeah. The concerning parts, and I, I am no me by no means an expert on him, or, or <laughs> don't know what I should. Yeah. But I I read Wikipedia. Okay. Oh, okay. But, well, there's yeah. your first problem. Yeah. <laughs> but here's, but here's what, what worries me about that and him, mm -hmm. that you might say that, is he said that so basically all the problems in society come down to the white man. And that's, you know, we're calling, we're calling Justin a Democrat. That sounds very liberal. <laughs> well, the thing if, about that is you have mm -hmm. to consider his time. Okay. You know, his mm -hmm. time. I mean, we're, we're talking about Segregation. Back when you had, you had different water fountains. <laughs> that's his time. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Okay, that's so fair. during his time, absolutely that was the case. But you <clears> want to <throat> know who else said that and where I got it from? Where's that? Chief Justice Clarence Thomas. Mm. 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 Okay. So he said that. Clarence he Thomas a had a hero? poster of Malcolm X in his college dorm. Okay. So black Republicans really don't have a lot of people to choose from when they're looking for their, yeah, yeah. their political grounding. Well, right? the people they have to choose from are... Let's be honest, the white liberal savior, you know, that may not be there for them, but they think they are. That's well, the, I'm talking about black people. Right. right. Like the black, black conservatives. People, yes. Oh, you black have, conservatives. Okay. Yeah, black okay. conservatives. Okay. Okay. You have Condoleezza Rice, Colin Powell, Clarence Thomas. Candace Owens. <laughs> no. <laughs> no. Candace she didn't Owens influence fan. any of my she politics. Okay. <laughs> but, but Condoleezza Rice um, I like did. Her. Uh, She's, okay. I like And Clarence Condoleezza. Thomas yeah. did. Yeah. yeah. I, yeah. I read know? her whole book very long. You did? Very well, long. Well, I have a different <laughs> style, you know, but, but the reality is, you know, I got that from Clarence Thomas. Yeah. You know, so if you got a problem with me saying it, then you should probably have a problem with Clarence Thomas. Have you ever felt that white, all white men are racist? No. My grandfather saved my life. He's okay. a white man. There you <laughs> go. Do you? Because you, uh, we do feel, I mean, as a middle-aged white Christian, yes. you feel like you're in the sights and, right now. Well, well, and you are. Yeah. But remember, I'm also the spokesperson, was the spokesperson for Donald Trump. Yeah. <laughs> I was going to ask you, as a black woman, <laughs> Thank what you. was it like working for the most sexist, most racist man in America? That's why this attack <laughs> is so incredibly egregious. But I also don't want to minimize potential still existing racism. Right. I don't think it's right to just say, if you think racism exists, you can't be a conservative. Right. I'm not there. But some people are there. I know. Yeah. I know. Yeah. But I don't, I don't want to make it sound like when I ask you that. Yeah. That if if you say yes, uh, white men can be racist or all white men are well, racist. I think anybody can be racist. Yes, yes. And yeah. I'm not trying to say if you think we live in a world where there's still racism, then you're not a conservative, because I know there is still racism. Yeah. But I but it, there was just something about <clears throat> that did struck me when I read Wikipedia. <laughs> wow. <laughs> I'm I'm transparent. Next, you're going to be on Huffington Post. I just, <laughs> <laughs> giving us facts from that. But, I, but tell me, did he say all the problems of the world were created by white men? Did he say that? I don't remember all of his speeches. Okay. Um, my, my favorite speech was um, at Berkeley, uh, the ballot of the bullet, and that's when he was warning black people to not vote with one block. You know, he said, mm -hmm. you're a political chump if you put all your, your votes into one bucket. Mm -hmm. And he changed through the years, didn't he? Oh, yeah. Yeah, he did. Yeah, right there before he was killed. Like, he didn't he, live he long left. enough to fully... Yeah. yeah. Well, yeah. him and uh, MLK, I think, were headbutting there for a while. They were. And then eventually mm -hmm. they you know found a much more common ground. I want to go back to Clarence Thomas yeah. because this leads us into the other thing that you're being... 
Oh, okay. Yeah. <laughs> Why when, don't you say one? Isn't it strange that I'm being attacked with you know sexism and racism? Right. Well, yeah. I'm getting ready to get into what, some porn what, now. What let's is, go. Oh, let's Lord. get into some porn. What, what connection could that possibly be, Katrina? <laughs> I mean, as, as somebody who... And the reason why this is funny to me, guys, like, all jokes aside, is he is doing this to an audience of people who've watched me on national television for over a decade defend Republicans from attacks just like this. Right, right, right. <laughs> from the... Within the... Yeah. Just like yeah. this. But yes. What did you think about the, the Sharia law? Is that the right term? What yeah, I think it? so. Sharia... I felt it also unfair they hit him with thinking him. There was there was a from one of the packs saying he wanted Sharia law in Texas. Mm-hmm. Right. I felt that, was that to be as ridiculous yeah. as it on you. Well, I, I, I mean, think they're saying that he that. voted to um, I, suspend I'm, the rules to pass some resolution acknowledging well, I, it was, something It was or just other. a day thing that he explained, and, and I know that they do this. You know, and in Congress, you can sit there and say, like he gave the example, I'm a broadcaster. You know, uh, football broadcast. Oh, we're going to have football broadcaster day. We're going to have. They have religious yes. days. Uh, they have for every kind of. He said so. The Muslims had come there in and said we want a Muslim, Muslim day, yeah. and there are three representatives that they said we'd like to have a Muslim day because we get the Christian days, we get the you know Jewish deals and all that stuff. So he was like, sure, and that's what he did. But then it. And then the he fan. wanted Sharia law. Yeah, to that, me, that him is, doing that meant that's that he smear. was wanting Sharia that's law. Smear. Yeah. And are I, you familiar I, with anything in Michigan? See, uh, we we live in a bubble in Texas. Other sure, than it's, things it's, are pretty it's good very here, high so we believe Muslim very high. Right. Do you know how that happens? Well, Im- immigration. No, but how does it happen in the government? L- little know. things, piece, piece by, by piece, piece yeah. okay. step by step, right? Resolution after resolution, they want to get sanctioned by the government and then slowly move it in to our municipalities. And mm-hmm. I'm against that. Okay. And I'm against that because of. Places like Dearborn, Michigan. Right. I would not have supported that at all. Right, right. Okay, I want to go back real quick to okay. the, the Clarence Thomas because people want us to ask about this. Uh, one of your, I, I think the one that, uh, and explain this to me, I don't know the full story, but somebody that runs your, your Twitter or now X uh, campaign or whatever mm-hmm. was in a, a business involved with somebody, uh, involved with a the porn industry somehow. <laughs> which this, <laughs> which, you know, and, and I'll, I'll ask you two things. One, is that true? Two, if it is true, can you talk to them about getting better plot lines in all the pornography? Because I feel like they're really weak. I would like to be, you know, I'd like to have more of a story. You, no, I'm kidding. Did you I don't know what you were getting into when you walked in here? <laughs> no, but I will, I will tell you that I, I warned my team before. I'm like, they're going to find a way to hypersexualize me. They just, they always do. Well, that's a pretty big way they to. They always right, do. Right, But I think if it would have been a man, it had been the same thing, though. If they would have said if there's a porn, you know. Do you something. really? I do, I do. Because I think that's kind of a... As Christians and conservatives, if if Justin Holland had a company that was involved with porn support, and I think that we'd be like, okay, dude, what's well, going Repub- on? Well, let me Republican tell you. men do not watch porn. Right. None of them so, do. Oh, they no, never not have. Not at all. Ever. They don't even know what no. it is. We have to explain it to them. But, well, no, look. See, the, the way that you know that is an outright <laughs> lie mm-hmm. is because they blurred it out. Okay. Do you know why they blur it out? <clears throat> you can't research. Defamation. Mm. Oh, okay. So they were okay. trying to avoid a lawsuit. By blurring it out, because okay. if it's true, you wouldn't have to do that. Well, explain the link. What? What's I don't. The, I don't know. No link where, at all whatsoever. I don't. There's no pornography. Like I don't okay. understand where okay. that comes from. Okay. Okay. There so, but I think that's why uh, they blurred it out because it's you. just not true. Okay. Because right. if it's true, and I would challenge them, post it. I dare you. What is true? And they would if they could. Absolutely. What is true is you've been on Air Force One. I want to get yes. to the nitty gritty of some things. Yes. All I know about Air Force One is when Harrison Ford was our president, and he was <laughs> he was on. That there. was a really good. Period. It, it was a good time. Glenn yeah. Close was the vice president. Yeah. You know, after having the affair with Michael Douglas, then she becomes vice president, it and then it's it crazy. So anyway. He beats up the terrorists and kicks them off his plane and all that stuff. But tell us about being on Air Force One. That has to be the most crazy, overwhelming thing when the first time you get on, on that there. plane. Were you like, I am on Air Force One? <laughs> I'm going to be very honest. The, the most awe moment, the first awe moment was actually walking in the Oval Office. Oh, I bet. Yeah. Because that was really the, like, I still have not been able to process that moment. Air Force One was amazing. But we had so much more fun on Trump Force One. <laughs> That's his point? Yeah. But a lot nicer. Oh, we had I'm so sure. much more fun on Trump Force One. I mean, the best part about Air Force One, and I tell this story a lot, was you can make phone calls. Uh-huh. And when you do, you don't just pick up the phone and call. Like, the military makes the call for you. 
Yeah, you got to be secure. So every time we would, you know, we'd have a list of people to call from Air Force One every time we'd go. They don't just let you. No. <laughs> And the, the best part was my son, I was calling my son one day and, and the military aide com, would come back and say, he keeps hanging up on us. And I'm like, what is well, yeah. going on? Were they, were yeah. they announcing themselves, this is but this, from Air Force One? Air Force one. Yeah. And he's like, he just kept hanging up. Did he know you were going to be on Air Force One? I guess not. Okay. <laughs> but he <laughs> should have. Yeah, right. Yeah. But I get home and he's playing the game and I said, why'd you keep hanging up on the military <laughs> operator? He's like, what are you talking about? I said, I've been calling you from Air Force One. He goes, oh, I thought that was a joke. <laughs> So that, that was, that's the funny. best part about Air Force One is being able to call people from Air Force One. And just say, guess where I am? Yes. You know, people love to do that. Guess where I am? Yes. Air Force Who gets to say Air Force It's so right. good. Okay. And the food is good. Can, now, I want, can I make it? I know we're running out of time. Mm-hmm. I just want to I got one it, thing I want to get to, okay. too. Okay. So I just want to read my list of negative crap. We got, a little, we got a little bit more time. Okay. okay. Can cool, we go, cool. like, just tell them we'll be a little late? Yeah, it's fine. Okay. All right. Cool. See, you love it. Look at this. You lo- you, yeah. Well, I want to make sure every question gets answered. And I felt like I hit... Justin, with every negative comment. Mm-hmm. And I just wanted to make sure. And we every- hadn't even gotten close to talking about realignment with Forney in the same district as Rockwall. We're oh. going to talk about an hour on that. Yeah. Oh, you wow. know. Just cancel your yeah. <laughs> Okay. So, reaching across the aisle, 86 Republicans yes, that's in the House, to get to. we've okay. got to compromise. And, and hmm. one, it, it would be easy to say, well, he tries to compromise and he's a rhino. How do you compromise without getting called a rhino? Compromise meaning Democrat chairs or just working to get well, legislation I, uh, done? Uh, uh, because there's a difference. There's a huge passed. difference. Because yeah. don't you think uh, if you because you need Democrats to pass bills, okay? Because there's only eighty is it eighty three uh, Republicans in the House, and you need a mm-hmm. hundred votes to pass a bill. So you're going to need at least seventeen Democrats to vote with you, mm-hmm. right? So you do need to reach across. You do sure. need to find common ground. But I'm with Jay because I feel like I'm very big on the crossing the aisle thing. I feel like back in the day when I was growing up, it was relatively common to talk to each other. They always tell the stories about when they would go at it when Reagan was president. Tip O'Neill was the uh, Speaker of the House, a Democrat, and they would just go at it. And then after it was done, they'd all go hit the same bar and all ha- and talk to each other and all that. I don't think that happens nowadays. But we do need to reach across. We mm-hmm. do need to work with each other. I don't think you're a rhino if you're talking to a Democrat or or, or helping it with something that maybe there is common ground. And you and and that leads to having them on chairing committees because I would think if it was reversed and the Democrats were a majority in the House, and no Republicans ever had an opportunity on, on a committee, you would be just as frustrated. So what's your stance on that? So do you believe that if Democrats take over Texas, they're going to share power with Democrats? No. I mean, with Republicans? Uh, they would have to, to a degree, because of the same thing, I would think. You actually wouldn't, and I'll tell you why. Um, the reason a lot of people struggle with Democrat chairs is because that's how our legislation gets killed. For example, right? we're in Rockwall County. Mm-hmm. We're growing. Mm-hmm. Right now, if we wanted to have something, let's say, go through transportation, mm-hmm. I've got to go through a liberal Democrat. Okay. Now, if I wanted to get something done, maybe he doesn't like my position on pro-life, but he can kill whatever bill I try to get through I gotcha. from Rockwall County. I gotcha. And I'm going to tell you another reason why this is so upsetting to so many people, because, you know, Justin is lying to people. And not only that, mm-hmm. but... You know, he's he's playing loose and fast with the truth, and he's hoping that people don't find out quickly, mm-hmm. which is why I'm being attacked personally. Um, personal attacks is shows you that he doesn't want people to know the truth. It's all a distraction. And I'll tell you why it's so important, because, you know, I've been in this fight for a very long time in Texas trying to stop Democrats from being chairs. So we're the only state that does it. Mm-hmm. And this nonsense that we have to have it or we can't get this done is a bold-faced lie. We do not have to have Democrats as chairs. We do not. And if that were true, ask yourself this. Why is it the Senate passes everything and they don't have Democrat right, chairs? Right, right, right. Right? Okay. They don't have chairs. Mm-hmm. They don't have Democrat chairs. Right. But yet, things get passed. And isn't there a, a proposal to have it where the majority uh, only can have, uh, have, have, have a chair on committees? Because uh, and, and, I know, as you mentioned, other states do that. Yeah, is they, there a proposal out there to have that in that way? But it would worry me if it got reversed at some point. Yeah. Yes. Well, yeah. as it should. Mm-hmm. And and he keeps saying, oh, well, it's been this way 100 years. Guess what? Things have changed in mm-hmm. 100 years. Mm-hmm. They are coming for our state. They are coming for our kids. They are coming with $100 million this election cycle. And if you believe 
that we should keep that in place, then you are not paying attention. Yeah. You're just yeah. not paying attention. And and that is a fundamental difference between the two of us as well. You know, Justin is, you know, a go along to get along guy. And I'm somebody that wants to go on offense. And you know that by a very clear contrast in, in a specific area. Mm-hmm. Justin votes for, you know, um, border security. He votes for constitutional carry. But you've been there four terms. Mm. Why are we just now voting on this? Okay. Right. What have you led on? What's your achievement? What's your accomplishment? What bill did you sponsor? Why do we still have in-state tuition for illegals? You know, he hasn't led on anything. And Republicans today need to be proactive. We need to be on offense. Mm -hmm. And when you do stand up and fight, which I have a very strong record of fighting for the people and for the Constitution and for freedom and for our kids and family, what does Justin choose to stand up and fight on? He chooses to stand up and fight with Democrats. He stands up and fights to stop your children from having school choice. He stands up and fights against the attorney general of the state of Texas, leaving Texas in a very vulnerable position against the Biden administration. He didn't do that for you. He didn't do that for the district. He did that for Democrats. Every position that Justin has taken where he actually stood up and fought was against us, not for us. He fights with the Democrats, not with Republicans. That is the problem people have. One thing I, I, you you mentioned, he he's running a smear campaign. Yes, he is. I've got, and, and I realize these come from PACs. And you mentioned last time, he mentioned, I would like to say all, I mean, I, you get the mail, everything, tons of stuff that is, is smearing him. And he said, I don't think that's coming from Dennis or Katrina, to be yeah. fair. That's PACs. But you do realize we are getting flyer after flyer I know. after flyer. So somebody's smearing him, <clears throat> right? Or are they just telling you how he voted? Well, well I think I some think of it's deceiving. none of it's personal. Yeah, I think so, I mean like but all none of it's of them. personal, right? It's right. all his voting record, right? That I've seen. But, I mean, you yeah, might have yeah, seen yeah. things I haven't <clears throat> seen, but <clears throat> there's no smear campaign going on. There's no well, I don't think he wants like attacks. he doesn't want Sharia law. You know, right. he doesn't want that, but they're well, putting that in there. That's what he wants. Yeah, That's not fair. I thought, you know what I thought was a little out of line? No, and I'm not taking up for him. I just yeah. want to be fair. I thought one that was uh, whatever advertising company or whoever thought, let's put Kyle Rittenhouse right. from another state, which right. he has no control He's over. He's never, he didn't even know who he was. Saying yeah. Justin Actually, voted. Actually, that is also a lie. Because he, he blocked him on Twitter not too long okay. ago. Well, I mean, but like when we brought it <laughs> up, you, he asked who he was. I don't know. Did you hear me? And I was like, what? <laughs> yeah. And I was he like, knows. Oops. Okay, but... But you can't say he voted against me having an AR-15 because he didn't, because he can't vote in Ohio, Illinois. Uh, Illinois, oh, I think. No, he lives here. Was... Kyle Rittenhouse lives in Texas. Yeah, he went to, he's at A&M or Blinn. Okay, I'm a dumbass, sorry. Yeah. No, I he's a Texan. But he I was originally from up there. Okay, yeah. I was just thinking, that's where the incident like, happened. My thought was there. like, don't say he voted against you because you don't live here. Yeah, he, he lives here. Okay, yeah. okay. okay. But the, the thing is, uh, so would you never work with a Democrat then on something? Would you never? Yeah, where well, we can agree, but okay. here's and here's the difference. Like, I will not compromise on values. Right, right. And we're not asking that. We're, but I mean, but you are. If you're asking me to vote for legislation that's going to allow Islam incrementally to enter our no, state, no, 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 no. that I'm, is a value issue. I'm saying if there is a what we're having is no, no, no. That, and I'm not asking for you to yeah. do that. Uh, I'm saying there are common grounds between the two. I think even Democrats are coming around on the border security yeah, to a degree. You know, I think some of them are actually realizing, okay, this is a problem. For yeah. the longest time, they kept saying it's fine. Now they're kind of like, okay, this is kind of a problem, especially up north where now they get to deal with it. When we, I love that Abbott sent all of them. Yeah, make every everywhere. state a border every, state. Hey, yeah, make yeah. every state a border state. Now, even New York is like, okay, we got to rethink this, you know, mm-hmm. and all that. So if there is that sliver of, okay, would you, and, and the Democrats are like, okay, listen, what, what do you got? And you would obviously go there and say, okay, here's what I want to do. What's your thoughts? And, yeah. Yeah, of course. Okay, okay, perfect. That's all I wanted to get to. I mean, you to. have to do that. I mean, exactly. that's, that's okay. how you, you work. You get things right. done. Trump did it. Like, it's, it's, yes. it's, I'm not one of those, like, oh, we can't ever work with Democrats. There are tra- and there's transitioning a lot of children. Like that, transitioning children. Yes, yes. Everybody can come together on that. Right. These are very important issues, but I will not compromise on the Second Amendment. No. And we're I not, will not compromise. Uh, right. On okay. My, and on we're my with faith. you on that. I'm with yeah. you on that. And let's go quickly to that then. The uh, him with the uh, doesn't want 18 to 20 year olds being able to buy semi automatics. Uh, you know, and and obviously he's gotten a ton semi automatic rifles. Rifles. Yeah. Uh, he's gotten a ton of uh, backlash on yeah. that one. I'm a, As obviously you I'm assuming yeah, As you that you don't agree with that. And no. and me, I think me and Jay uh, also struggle. 
with with that as and, far as uh, and we making were pretty that vocal a, that was going to have to be a agree to disagree right right my, my feeling was like if you truly believe that and this was not some vote for you to get a favor or anything else i can live with that mm-hmm. i don't agree mm-hmm. but if this was he doesn't really believe that but he's voting for other motives then i can't get behind that right. at all and that that is bad for our government from from well, yeah, if you're up. doing a I scratch your back, you scratch but, mine kind of I, deal, I, I, I don't want that. My thought from speaking with him was he believes it. Yeah, he believes it's he a— He believed that mm-hmm. that was a good vote. Uh-huh. I think and I'm it's, assuming you'd say that's bullshit. I don't know. I will never claim to know why somebody does what they do. Okay. Um, I just wouldn't do that. But what I do know is that is not what the district wants, and mm. that's not what a Republican— um, should be doing considering okay. I mean this this specific measure was in Biden administration's gun control measures over the summer yeah safe communities so any Republican that's voting for Joe Biden's gun control legislation should be looked at twice mm-hmm, mm-hmm. like I said every issue where he takes a stand mm-hmm. it's to side with the Democrats not the voters not the party that's okay. a problem well and then when we get to that too i, I go into it kind of gets into this re- i think reason me and jay also disagree with it is it's a the old we're throwing a deck chair off the titanic it's not really going to help much uh with it, 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 that's where i come back with the a little bit a little bit more well, you're, a little bit you're more. smoking you use the example yeah, i use of, a smoking deal well, you but, can't smoke here right it started okay, with you can't bars. smoke here and now you now, just can't smoke yeah, i mean yeah. even though it's still legal Everywhere yeah. you go, you can't smoke well, because it led little by little by little. Pretty soon it was this evil thing. I'm not uh, for smoking at all, but it's a legal thing you can yeah. do that we're making evil. And I think that could happen with the gun control once there's a little crack yeah. left. That but I, they but could that's take not rocket that. science. This is what the left does. Exactly. Yeah. This is yeah, why people struggle with his votes and why he's voting unanimously with Democrats against Republicans, yeah, against yeah. our values, bottom, against our policies. Bottom line is Texas voters want a very strong Second Amendment right to if you are 18 year or older, you can buy what you want. You can protect yourself. Mm-hmm. Don't jack with it. Right. And, feel- and, 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 and his side was there's a lot of things you can't do at 21. You can't drink. You can't. And, and so yeah, why but should drinking buy- not protected by our Constitution? Right. Exactly. Right. That's what I was getting to. That's, right. Right. You know. Exactly. But I think that was. The, think and it- also he is he, he has empathy for a number of the representatives who uh, yeah, have been hit yeah. by the, the school shootings. But I'm like most Republicans. I don't think more laws stops the. School shootings. But People go get the, get the guns wherever they need to I get them or whatever. I actually saw this clip. He said that this person, you know, was waited to get it. So what? Is is your answer wait till he turns 21 to go shoot people? Right, right. No, right. no law is going to stop a criminal from committing a crime. Mm-hmm. So right, why would you right. why would you criminalize law-abiding citizens? If I was 20 and a single mom. I had an AR. Guess what? I would be in trouble with a gun crime mm-hmm. if that law mm-hmm. was on the books. Mm-hmm. So it, it's always wrong to criminalize law-abiding citizens thinking that you're going to prevent a crime. That is a liberal mindset. Yeah, it is, because we're, we're trying to think that criminals have a normal mental capacity yes. when they don't. Yes. That they, they don't look at, obviously they, they're fine breaking laws, so why would they say, well, I want to rob so, the bank, but it says I can't get a gun. Or you i got to wait okay. two years. Yeah, i got to wait know? two okay. years. Real quick, let me finish my little list. Okay. Yep. Since you made me do all the hard hitting reporting, I did. I, I just wanted to talk than, about porn. I am, yeah, I am, <laughs> oh my gosh, it's insane. <laughs> I am more of the uh, the smarter, hard hitting. Wow. All right, let's hear it. The journalist. Wow. Okay. Uh, working with City. And you, let's be quick because I want to get to your main things that you, the positive, what you want to do. Yeah. So, working with the City. Um, for those that don't know, I, I also have a history of serving in the City. I am okay. planning and zoning. Yeah, I don't think you, you knew that. Did I you? do that, yeah. Yeah, you tell it to I, me every day. Okay, yeah. okay. Just wanted to make sure. Uh, there's <laughs> there's a lot of talk about the state saying the federal government is always all over us. Back off. We need our freedom. Yes. There's a lot of people in cities saying, back off, state. You're trying to tell us what to do. Yes. You're, you're getting in the way. Uh, a district like 33, there's districts that do things horribly. Dallas, w- the way that the, the, the what they allow to happen with their properties, horrifying. What we do around here is good. And and we make good choices and good choices of materials. Those those uh, that legislation comes down to really hindering. I think what the city can do. What's your yeah. thought on that? Well, I think you know Austin is taking a page out of the DC book. I mean, they are trying to centralize government. Mm-hmm. I mean, to the mm-hmm. point to where they're now controlling which materials can even be used to build houses. Here. Right, 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 right. So so that is centralization. Um, 
<clears throat> you know, we do need to do more to try to pull back control, you know, towards the cities, if not the counties, at the mm-hmm. very least. Um, so that is something that we should be working on. You know, when I was on boards and commissions, one of the things that, you know, we did was t- to stop some of the developments, you know, make the developers own a little bit more of what they're offering to these cities because it all gets passed on to the consumer. Mm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Okay, two more. Okay, go. Two more. I drive you crazy with this. No, I'm, I'm, no, I, I like it. I, I like it. I can take a breather. I'm I'm just gonna, gonna, yeah. I have to have do my smoke. checklist. Every, okay, um, <laughs> and, and we've touched on this hyper conservatism. Mm-hmm. Can it cause ineffectiveness in Austin? That's a good question. And someone told me a perfect example of that is Brian Slayton, that he was very ineffective because his inability to give on any conservative issue. I, I'm not uh, knowledgeable enough to say who he is. Mm-hmm. But I don't think it matters what's your thought on. Look, there are, I, it depends on why you're serving, right? Um, a lot of people go serve because it becomes their identity. They feel better about themselves and they want to go to the parties, right? Um, then there are those who just want to, you know, build up their social media or, or whatever. Um, so it all depends on what you're doing. Like for, for me personally, it is a service. It's something that I've done unofficially, and the people here have just asked me to do it officially now. Um, I already have a very large media platform. I already have social media. I've already been to the fancy parties. I've flown on Air Force One. I'm not really impressed by any of this stuff. Mm-hmm. But what I do but know— But you are impressed being here this, in the shack. Yeah. Now, this is elite status. Okay. <laughs> Pushed up against the, the wall shack. where she couldn't leave if she wanted to because they're trapped inside of a yes. shack. The yeah. shack is my new favorite place. We made sure if we offended you, you weren't. <laughs> yeah, you couldn't leave. Couldn't run, yeah. right? But no, I, I think it all depends on why you're there. Okay. Somebody like myself, I mean, most of the people in Austin already know me. I have relationships there. I helped some of them get elected, even the fighting factions. Like, I have friends on both sides. Mm-hmm. So I'm not going there to try to hinder things. I'm going there to move things forward because that's what I do. You know, there are things that I was fighting in Texas 10 years ago, like the magnets for illegal immigrants. Like, why are they still on the books? I want to go lead on those issues the way Florida has. Florida has gone above and beyond. Besides eliminating the magnets and and doing E-Verify, they went further to protect their citizens from the illegals who are already here. Like they have eliminated the ability for municipalities to give out government sanctioned ID cards to illegals. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. We need to be doing those things Mm -hmm. and nobody's leading on those issues. And that's the problem I have. Yeah. 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 Uh, Katrina, one thing that's really close to my heart is mental health issues. Yes. And I know you've, you've, you've talked about that. I don't think it gets talked about a lot in politics. Not enough. It's getting better. Do you know how many, uh, I just read the, I didn't go to college, but we've we've been clear <laughs> on that. Yeah, you've, it's obvious. You've, you've I read Wikipedia. clearly shown that you haven't gone to college. Wikipedia go says one in eleven people take an SSRI. It's oh. a lot of people. That's yeah. a lot of people, and that some is. people are misdiagnosed. Look, that that's actually my background in okay. healthcare. So, my last role was uh, operations administrator for neuroscience at Baylor University Medical Center, and I oversaw a lot of uh, uh, neuroscience and and. Before that, I was managing an outpatient psychiatric practice and substance abuse clinic. And it's it's true. Like we are we are all mm-hmm. people who are hurting from something. Mm-hmm. And it's near and dear to my heart because, you know, being born to a teenage mom who thought she was an adult at the time, clearly was not an adult at 15. We all think we are at 15. But. We, we, we do. <laughs> we do. But, you know, in her case, and it was the 70s, you yeah. know, she became a drug addict. So I grew up. Mm-hmm in a home that was not conducive for children, you know? And I, to this day, I know it was all God to get me through that. I mean, I started raising my siblings at the age of seven. I took care of myself, left home at 17, okay, and then look quick, back. Real quick, how many siblings? Four. Four si- oh, wow, okay. Yeah. All right. How many boys, yeah. how many girls? Uh, two boys, two girls. And your mom, what did she do for a living? What was? Uh... She was a drug addict. Oh, really? Yeah. That doesn't pay well. No, so it was, you know, she, she tried to, Job look, satisfaction bless her heart, is not great. <laughs> bless her heart, I mean, she, she tried, she did the best she could. Right. Now, this is something you realize as an adult. Sure. You know? You're probably very but at the time, angry about it at the time. You're angry and yeah. you're upset and you're frustrated, but I just give all grace to God because if not, like, he put me in an environment that built the woman I am today. If not for that environment, I would not have helped President Trump get elected. I know that for a fact. Mm-hmm. So 
you know, it, it's really <clears throat> hard. But then, you know, you survive. Like, I survived. And when you do that, you, you look at other people and you just want to help other people. You know, that's why I tell my story. That's why I don't run for it. That's why I'm out there. And mental health for me is, is a new mission because we're not treating it the way it should be treated. You know, for example, if you have a kid who's struggling, the average family cannot afford fifty, sixty thousand dollars $60,000 for the 90-day treatment. That is required. 30 days doesn't work. 60 days doesn't work. Studies show 90 days or more is how you help people get right. help. And the average family can't afford that. Mm-mm. It's just no. you, they can't do it. No. And then we wonder why we have so many adult children being buried today. And it's a substance abuse issue. And a lot of people don't realize that substance abuse is coming from a personality issue. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. You know, it's these it's personality disorders. The they're trying to cope and they're not understanding. So there's not tools and resources available. We have those now. And so one of the things that I want to do in the legislature is get to the bottom of this because there are new programs that we can't implement, um, you know, whether it's attachment theory and all these other things where within 30 days you're, you're retraining people how to see themselves. Mm-hmm. A lot of it's an image issue. It's a worth issue. It's a value issue. And those things can be changed. Let me ask you this. My family's dealing with uh, mental health issues mm-hmm. and you're right about the medical bills. I've come to the conclusion that a big part of this problem is social media. When you talk mm-hmm. about your self worth yes. and because yes. yes. when we were growing up, we weren't comparing ourselves to everybody the way you do now. You're so and, right. and I think and what are your thoughts on that? Not that I want to get rid of social media, and I don't want to. I don't. I'd get rid of it. I mean, I wouldn't <laughs> be upset. I wouldn't be upset if it. But I think the toothpaste is out of the tube now. Yeah, but it is. but You're so right. But That's, I think the social media gosh. thing. If you already have an identity problem, it's a lot worse well, when you get on there. I, I've, Very much so. I've watched my daughters click through TikTok. Right. Yeah. Your value Which, is based on likes. And it's just pretty girl after yeah. skinny girl right. after pretty girl. Mm-hmm. And I'm just, I know it's 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 affecting them. Right. All of that stuff. It is, right? What do you but do? It's, it's not just that, though. It's a it's a foundational issue because those, yeah. uh, those identity issues come from home. And the dads when, that let their daughters it's, it's, flip through that stuff. <laughs> well, no, it's 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 really um, it's a childhood issue. It's the patterns and behaviors and the things that you learn as you're growing up from infancy. The mm-hmm. first seven years is what determines right. your value, your worth, because you just replay your family's you know program over and over and over. And if you've got both parents working, they're not paying attention, they don't mm-hmm. feel like they're valued. Little things like that can really hurt a child's image as they grow up and then it plays out in intimate relationships and that's where we you know i started my own business in 2001 uh you struggle when you start your own business yeah our kids are born my wife was adamant i'm staying home we're gonna figure it out and we did and we feel like that was a huge deal now you have to tell your kids hey by the way we don't get to go on all the vacations that you see all the other ones going on and we're not going to have a lot of the things but that is but i do go i I agree 100 percent with you that it is from the home but once those kids start making friends and those friends yeah. are a bigger influence than the parents are for a while yeah that's the hard part because I, you could be the perfect parents but these friends are kind of you know creeping in there and doing these things and uh that is and then you combine that with the social media with the uh everything in the world right now the where it's yeah. appearance it's if you're not doing this you're a loser uh all these kind of deals it's just a big problem right now but i do think it seems to be better than it was as far as dealing with mental health because it is being talked about. It used to not even be talked about. Right. You didn't tell anybody. And so when somebody has it and they're open about it, Dak Prescott, you know, I know he can't lead us to a, a Super Bowl. I get that. But <laughs> he turns everything into a sport. I did. Yeah, everything I see, sports. I see. But <laughs> his big deal is mental health. That's mm-hmm. what he, his brother committed suicide, his, you know, and all these things. And he's been open about it, about his own struggles. Which helps so many people. Right. When they see somebody like him. Right. And yes. so that you are, are, are bringing it up and I think is, is, is tremendous. And, 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 and so big. anyway, yeah. I, thank I, you for I, that. I, Yeah. Yeah, it, it's something that uh, I, and the way the world is now too. Everything's supposed to be so black and white. Um, and if you don't agree with this, you're a, you're not with me, or you know that kind of stuff. That's a hard thing for people that are struggling mentally on trying yeah. to fit in. You know, the human like, condition is tough. Yeah, you know, and I'll I'll share this with you, and and maybe you can look into this. And for anybody that's listening that might have, you know, friends or family members who are struggling, um, there's a woman named Thais Gibson. And she runs a program called the Personal Development School. Mm -hmm. So it's not mental health. It's more of a self-help 
But she has a really good program at, you know, on a personal development side to figuring out, you know, what your issues are, what needs weren't met. It teaches you how to drill down to figure out where you're where you're falling short in yourself. Mm -hmm. And then she provides tools and methods to to help you get back to yourself. And she has shown success within, right. you know, 30 days. That's great. So I and highly we, recommend and that. And talk about mental health, we're not talking about somebody that's schizophrenic. I mean, right, we are. Right. We're talking about every day that a lot of times you see these people and they look fine. Mm -hmm. They're acting fine. But when they get home or they're, they're by themselves, suffering. they are suffering. They're struggling. Greatly. Yeah. And, and that is something that just makes it so hard. Because if somebody's dealing with a physical problem, you see it. Or mm -hmm. you you mm -hmm. kind of you know and you oh man I hate the, yeah. the cast you know what can we do to help and all that it, you don't get that with the mental issues and so and, and the stigma still exists it, does. Uh, yeah. it, it coming I've had this with my my own parents uh, very religious wonderful parents but you need to get right with God yeah yeah something's mm -hmm. going on there if you're suffering right. But would they say that if my kidneys needed medication? <laughs> yeah. No. But this is an organ, too. It is. And so there's, you see what I'm saying? There's, and there's, God gives you the ability to use what is out there. You know, that's a part yeah. of it. You know, where, you know, hey, you get right with God. Yeah, I am. And, and by the way, go to this person or use this medication or whatever yeah. that yeah. God has allowed us to have, to have. And, yeah. and to use. But, no, I'm with you. And, and uh, it, it's just something that is, uh, I think it's, it's one of those things to me that is said a lot, but are they really, mm -hmm. you know, doing something about it? Well, you know? let's put it this way. If someone was running for president, and it was brought out that they had been on SSRs for many years in their lives. Mm -hmm. They struggle with depression. Am I wrong in saying they have no chance? I mean, I mean, come on. What if you had a current president that seems like that there's some. Uh, uh, See, I come from a different perspective because I worked in that area and I know a lot of people are misdiagnosed, especially women. Yes. Women right, will go right. in, they're tired, you know, they don't feel good. They feel down. And the doctor, first thing they do is they put them on an SSRI. That's true. Which can hurt people greatly. Well, yes. and women are on. way, they're, they're a lot deeper than, than guys, you know, and so they have a lot more things that they're dealing with. I know raising a son and a daughter, I said this before, the daughter takes every ounce of my being to raise because she uses all things. You have two daughters. Uh, I'm doubled up. Uh, you're doubled up with twins. My son just throw a steak out there and everything's fine. Mm -hmm. You know, he'll, he's just the dumb ass and he's fine, but it is. And it's two different worlds. And I could see how women are misdiagnosed because of uh, their thought yeah. process and the way they look at things as opposed to the way guys look at but things. But let's not underestimate this, this huge growing statistic of men, mental illness and suicide. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Right. Oh, I know. But, but men don't talk about it. That's the thing. Women will talk about it more. I would it's think. It's a stigma. We're uh, weak. Uh, uh, we are. That's it. That's what I'm getting to. Yeah. You can't come out and say, hey, man, I'm kind of struggling with this. Can you mm -hmm. talk about it? They, you're worried they're going to be like, well, dude, what? let's just go shoot hoops. Yeah, you know, yeah, whatever. Yeah. Yeah. And, and that is the issue. Now, I think it's better, but I do mm -hmm. think you have a lot more people now that are coming out and, and, it, and talking about it, celebrities, athletes. And uh, people like Dak. I mean, that's why it's so yeah. helpful. If you can be him and talk about it, <clears throat> it can be. It, mm -hmm. Yeah. That's yeah. why I like these self-help programs because mm -hmm. you don't have to go anywhere. You don't have to go see a doctor. You mm -hmm. can just, you know, figure out where you are on the scale and just start learning about it. And is your experience, there's some people need, it ain't the same kind of treatment for everybody. Right. You, right. the, the self-help thing would be very beneficial to most people, but it may mm -hmm. be something else that somebody else needs. Mm -hmm. Yep. This to have the ability to go find what you need is a big problem. And then it gets us to the healthcare and, and the crazy numbers there as far as cost and, mm -hmm. and, and that you just sit there and you're just like, I can't believe that this is the amount and what we have to do, uh, to, to, to deal with this. And so we, that gives you more anxiety. <laughs> uh, switching gears real quick. Mm -hmm. Do we have time to tackle the very short, easy topic of the border? Sure. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> A couple minutes. Man. Yeah, sure. Yeah. Let's what? Do it. What's your thoughts? What's going on? What the heck is going on? Have you been? Have you seen the border? I've been have to the border. Yes. Okay. What did you see? <clears throat> Very disturbing images. Mm -hmm. um, you know, I was there in 2020, and with the Trump campaign, and I interviewed people. Um, just wanted to see what people thought, right? And. Strangely enough, you know, we had people who supported the border wall, and then there were people who didn't support the border wall. We were in El Paso, and, you know, this, this one woman, you know, where there was a wall, 
you know, but, you know, what, three miles down, there was no wall. Right, right. You know, and she said, oh, you know, this is fine, this is fine, but they shouldn't be building the wall. And I said, okay, so should we just take this part down then? If you think we shouldn't have the wall, should we just take your wall down? Mm. Well, no, we shouldn't do that. Right. You know? Right. So it's a, it's a very interesting well, it's like dynamic. The, it's the prison thing. When, when you need to build a new prison, yeah, we need more prisons, but yeah. not in our town. Don't right, do it right. here. You need to do it over so there. That, that, yeah. Yeah. Somewhere yeah. yeah. So it, it's an interesting dynamic. Um, uh -huh. But, you know, for me, the border is my trigger issue. It is my number one issue. Okay. Why? Uh, because, Why? because illegal aliens entering our country are disturbing the minority communities the worst. Mm. The burden is on black and brown communities. And they're starting to be more vocal about that. Yes, they are. Yes. Thankfully. Mm -hmm. um, but that's always how it's been. The burden has always been there. I mean, you know, our kids couldn't get their vaccines. Our kids couldn't get school supplies because the churches were full of illegals. Right. You know? Right. Um, <clears throat> it's that community that's hit the hardest. And um, so it's always been a trigger issue for me. The fact that we still have magnets is a problem. You know, we held countless numbers of events and rallies in Austin to try and, you know, get rid of sanctuary cities, to get rid of in-state tuition for illegals, to get E-Verify. Um, things that we still have today, by the way. You know, who's leading on that? It's not Justin Holland. And um, these are things that are very important to me because this is impacting us, our children, and our futures. And, you know, I remember when Dan Patrick ran for lieutenant governor. You know, they were like, oh, you can't talk about what, you know, what's coming across the border. You know, you can't say that diseases are coming across. And we're like, no, you're going to go on Univision and you're going to tell the truth. We and he did. We can't and he won. say it because it's racist. It's offensive. It's racist. Yeah. It's offensive. Everybody. Yeah. yeah. Um, and he did. Yeah. He said it and he won mm -hmm. um, because legal migrants agree with us. Sure. And that's <laughs> so, the whole point of it. So it's like, yeah. we should be on one team here. And don't you think that's why Trump did well in 2016? Was 100%. He said what we all thought. Yep. And that's why so many people were behind him, including me yeah. at that yeah. time, because it was like, yeah, it, it, I love it when the debates, when he was... <laughs> You know, hey, all y'all got, you know, lobbyists behind you and you got, you know, all these things. I ain't, nobody's controlling my, you know, what I can say. Y'all have to, you know, abide by these things. I love uh -huh. that. Um, so going, so that now what Trump said before when he got in so much trouble, hey, there's going to be criminals coming across and all these things. A lot more people are now like, okay, yeah. I mean, that was in the right. DOJ well, report, they started, by the way. Right. So it wasn't made up. Send, right, right. Started sending them to New York. Right. So but now you see Chinese, you know, they're, they're the terrorists, all these people that are now yeah. seeing, well, let's just put our guys in there. You've and got to have to borders. Them. You've got you to have, have borders. borders. And there's, right. there's, I think other countries have strong borders. Why can't we, you know, and, and why can't yeah. we still say, okay, yeah, we want you to go through the legal process. I'm sorry it may take a while. That's life. You why, know? It is. why do you think the Biden administration allows what they're doing to happen? Why? Why? Well, they need the voters. Right. Is and, that really what it's, I mean? Oh, absolutely. Okay. There's no question, um, which is another reason uh, why I decided to get in this race is because Texas didn't shore up its systems. Florida did. Yeah. Florida went above and beyond to secure their elections. They even implemented mm -hmm. um, an, an office to investigate election crimes. And you should see what they've uncovered just in one year of that being available. <laughs> they purged their voter rolls. You know, they did all of these things to shore up their elections, which you would think after 2020, it would have been a priority for all Republican states. Mm -hmm. <laughs> right. Mm -hmm. yeah. And knowing that Texas is the target, we should have been front and center. Why is Texas behind Florida on nearly everything? Which That's is just not acceptable. Yeah. It's not acceptable. Florida shouldn't be ahead of us in anything. In anything. <laughs> yes. We should be leading on border issues. Right. We should be leading on immigration. We should be leading on education. We're leading on nothing. Yeah. So I'm thankful that Governor Abbott is, you know, really taking a strong arm at dealing with the border right now because with everybody that's coming over, we're just we're we're gonna be helpless soon. And talking about the elections, we talked about this with Justin. Uh it bothers me tremendously that everything's electronic, mm -hmm. and yet it seems to work slower. It seems to have more issues, way more than when we used to put the paper ballot and pop yeah. it in the box and somebody counted it. Is this another thing that, that, I mean, is that something that bothers you and that you think is really suspect? Look, I lived through it. Yeah. So you, it you, deeply bothers me. That was part of me. your job, right? Yeah. This. Okay. I mean, I was getting calls from, you know, Philadelphia and, you know, Georgia. I mean, it was, with technology, 
and especially after what we went through, I don't think anybody trusts technology, no. you know, but it's it's mm. where we are. I don't think it's going away, no. but I fully support paper backups for sure. Yeah. That's right. We used to well, have that. The, the, the computer system that you use. Do you remember when you were a kid? You're too you're too young. But do you remember the YCAT computer system? Yes. And you're, well, you're, I you're, remember you're, that. You're not you're the same. You're, how old are you? I'll, I'm Am almost I? 50. <laughs> I'm close to 50. <laughs> What are you getting at Sephora? <laughs> <laughs> no, okay, so we're. I we're, mean, we're, we're, he's old. I'm 57. Yeah, that's that's, that's getting. But there. you okay? So you remember those? It looks like that. Yeah. It does. It does. And I do not feel confident hitting that thing and like. I just worry. It, got when it. I, yeah. I, when I punch, I work on a computer all day, <laughs> and I know the things I can manipulate. Uh, you know, I'm a graphic designer. Mm-hmm. I don't know how many, the political mailers I do are. Hey, make this guy look like okay. Here we go, and people think it's real. You know, I can't believe that Biden has a tail. You know, well, yes. no, he doesn't really. <laughs> I did that. You know, but you know, it's one of those things. But people don't realize what can be done. What things can be manipulated. I yeah. think they realize, yeah. but they don't realize to the extent that it is. Well, I the think. government would never lie or cheat. No. Oh, would. never. No, never. Yeah, no, that's but thing. see, that's why it's important to have protections in place. Mm-hmm. That's why it's important to make sure that we can actually prosecute voter fraud. That's why it's important to make sure that we don't have dead people voting. Like, why are we not purging our voter rolls? And that comes to the, the voter sense. ID thing, you know, where it comes back to that, where again, I can't believe people are again, like... again, that's racist. And I don't understand that connection, but I that's a whole other discussion. Yeah, I, I don't understand. So how so long have pro- you been registered to vote here in Rockwell? When I moved, so 21, 22. Okay. Yeah. And you, okay. To, bring, to bring something up, you voted for Obama. No, I did not. You never did? No. That's what my flyer said. Well, your flyer is wrong. <laughs> <laughs> your flyer is wrong. Okay, okay. And there's actually a retraction I'm, in Politico okay, on okay. that. Right. So, That's you know. crazy. I know. That's not true. What? People just I voted lie. for Sarah Palin. <laughs> Sarah Palin's actually a friend of mine. So. I liked her. <laughs> yeah. So I voted for her in okay. that election. Okay. All right. Okay. So pro and con each year. Pro and con. So I'd say Dennis is a nice guy. I'd say Khan is um, he's he's he needs to learn a little bit more about Texas politics and develop some relationships. Um, pro on Justin would be, you know, exactly what I said at the forum. You know, I thanked him for mm-hmm. the service that he's given, you know, to the district. I mean, you acknowledged how difficult it is. Absolutely. To run a it yeah. absolutely is. And um so I do think that that is um, something to be commended if you, you know, serve your constituency. And the con is, you know, sometimes when you're there too long, you lose your way. Mm. And I think that that's what happened. And I think that's why there's so much support in the district. And that's why he's attacking me personally, uh, because he can't he won't run on his on, on those issues. Like you won't see him send out a mailer <clears throat> saying I voted for gun control. Like mm-hmm. he's not sending it. He's not telling the truth about his record. And I am telling the truth, and that's why he's attacking me personally, mm. which, you know, is fine. But I think that if you're going to, you know, hide behind the shield of being a devout Christian while bearing false witness against your neighbor, you know, that's, that's very telling. It says more about his character than it does mine. So early voting starts Tuesday. That's right. Mm-hmm. Do you, anything you want to say to, to your voters? Your last yeah, words. sure. So, yeah, early voting starts Tuesday. Um, we have meet and greets still going on on the website, katrina com. Come out and see us. I'd love to meet you all, answer all your questions. And then finally, you have to give us one Trump story. Some yes. funny. The best one. The best one you got. Oh, the best because one. Because I, I just am. So, you know, the eating Kentucky Fried Chicken on Air Force One. I remember that one, you know, and all these things. And just going, did you go through a drive through with them? Do you go through a drive We did, a McDonald's drive through <laughs> You were with him in the car? We were in the motorcade. Did the workers know that was Donald Trump getting Eventually they did, yes. Uh, that's so great. <laughs> because back then he would always sit in the front seat. Like he never wanted to sit in the so back seat. So they saw him? Yeah. No. And does he... I, I picture Donald Trump kind of being out of touch with everyday stuff, which you may be. Uh, but <laughs> did he order? I mean, did he get on there and go, yeah, supersize that uh, quarter he's, pounder meal? He's not out of touch every day. I mean, he's the reason why he resonated so well with working class is because yeah. he's like like us. I mean, we yeah. would be at events and he'd be talking to, you know, the wait staff in the room asking what they thought about certain okay. policies. Good. What and, did he and order? Included them. What was his order? Well, at McDonald's. 
Always yes, a Diet Coke. always okay. a Diet Coke. <laughs> always a Diet Coke. But I mean, he ordered um, the hamburgers for this. We were t- we were going back to the plane after uh, the first debate or the de- Wisconsin debate, and um, they had forgot to get food, and so um, we were heading back to Trump Force One at the time, and. <laughs> And Melania was like, not McDonald's again. He goes, that's okay. You can have a fish sandwich. <laughs> Did you like Melania? I love Melania. She was I feel like she was yes. so I love the family. I love yeah. them all. Okay. Yeah. Okay. I love all of them. The, you know, yeah. when the, she was first lady. The boy that's eight feet tall. Yeah. Baron. <laughs> Baron. Yes. Yeah. But when Melania was first lady, all we've been wanting for our whole deal, they tried to make Jackie Kennedy this, was we need this beautiful fashion you get it and they just treat her like yeah, they would they not did. give her a break no Mm-mm. not a break not a break so i always feel she's a for her. class act and she probably and I'm she's, to hear she's that. flawless and you know she just looks like an angel that's great yeah she's very kind all right well this is fun i appreciate you joining us thank yeah, you thanks for, for having me yeah, yeah. It was good. You come back to the shack anytime yeah, okay yeah yeah <laughs> just give us a call we'll get the white chocolate mocha <laughs> the the lady pearson <laughs> drink lady ready pearson. yeah that's pretty funny funny guys yeah blast from the past yeah well there thank you, go. you so much we've got our next week we've got somebody you may know uh-huh. john Rackliff. john Rackliff. yeah oh yeah I love he's gonna, john. He's we're gonna, gonna talk us. about the book of secrets uh, we're gonna I'm find sure out read i know he knows who helped with kennedy's assassination right right i know right. he knows about the aliens right oh we're, i'll tune in for that we're, we're gonna get it all yeah, <laughs> we're, gonna <laughs> we're gonna have him reveal so many top secret things and then my favorite about john is that he my favorite thing is real quick is he was at notre dame was a soccer player at notre dame his roommate i think was a baseball player and then he had another roommate was a kicker on the football team but the kicker was kind of overweight and the the other two guys you know him and the other guy he goes yeah the one that plays professional sports for 16 years is our overweight kicker guy who kicked (laughs) for the saints forever he goes he's the one that makes it but anyway yeah it'll be fun having john on. yeah yeah cool thank you so much thank you katrina thanks for having me all right see y'all next time